Happy second day of the NBA regular season. Warriors fans, I am your host of Warriors Today by Chat Sports, Allie Barefoot. Producer Smitty is right here to my right, and we're breaking down two big topics after last night's loss to the Phoenix Suns on today's show. Of course, we're breaking down some possible trade targets for a big man. It's getting to the point where maybe you don't want to pick up somebody off the wire. You might need to trade away some assets. And also the Warriors' closing lineup choices. This caused a little bit of confusion last night, but Steve Kerr put his comments to rest. Before we get started, I want you guys to know the pinned comment on today's show. What big would you trade for? Before you hear any of my ideas, type in the comments right now, who is a big that currently plays in the NBA that you would like to see the Warriors trade away from? I'll break you down my picks in just one second because we actually have three choices. Yes, I created these trades myself. I wanted to see what this would actually look like. And I also looked on some on the internet to see who would be available to actually trade. So let's just get right into it. The first trade that I cooked up was for the Brooklyn Nets. Now, this one is the only one that actually the Warriors do receive two players, and that would be Dorian Finney-Smith and Spencer Dinwiddie. And the Nets would receive Chris Paul, Brandon Pojemski, and two second-round picks. The reason why the Nets would do this is because they do love Macau Bridges, but they need a strong point guard. Chris Paul could absolutely do that, and he's not going to be in the Warriors for an extended period of time because he's already kind of up there in age. But the fact that you would get Dorian Finney-Smith and Spencer Dinwiddie, this is going to add size and length. You can move Dorian Finney around from that forward center position as well, but there are some pros and cons to this trade. There is versatility with Dinwiddie in size and length. Finney Smith can play perimeter and paint D Two veterans. You would be getting two veteran guys, which the Warriors are a veteran team, so that would make sense. But the cons are if Looney and Green are having injury problems, then you're in trouble because now you're truly relying on Dinwiddie and Finney Smith, when I really think these should just be assets to Looney and to Dream on Green. And I put this also in the, co the cons, is that they're both older players. If you kind of want a trend to be younger and be healthier and be more versatile, I would want to go younger, but ultimately the Warriors are a veteran team. They could use two more veteran guys. But that's just choice number one. I have choice number two right now where the Warriors do receive Isaiah Hartenstein from the New York Knicks, and they would give away GP2. Trace Jackson Davis and two second round picks as well. I know I don't want to put TJD in any kind of trades, but he has a lot of potential being a rookie. He's very young. The Knicks could definitely afford to have him, but this money adds up and Hartenstein is currently putting up about 17 points right now. Oh, excuse me, eight points right now. Two assists and almost five boards, which is phenomenal for the Warriors. Another five boards would be great to have per game or more. I like Hartenstein a lot for the Boston, uh, for, excuse me, for the Warriors. I think that he could use a lot of size coming in to the Warriors. But the third trade that we did look at is Miles Turner from the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers, of course, would get the most out of this trade. Jonathan Kuminga, Gary Payton II, and Brandon Pajemski. Giving up J.K. would be tough. I think J.K. is going to have a lot of potential here in the Warriors uniform. But if you want to get somebody like Miles Turner, a 27-year-old who's got a lot to prove and still growing, you might have to give up somebody big. In that case, it is Jonathan Kaminga for me, GP2, and, of course, Brandon Pajemski. That rookie is going to have to be a part of the deal. Because, like I said, if you were to give up a lot in this trade, I think getting Turner would be huge for the Warriors. Like I said, I think the Warriors are now past the, pro the point where they can go get somebody off the waiver wire. I think you truly have to go get a big that is currently playing in the NBA, doing stuff on a team, and is ready to work. But the Warriors do have 13 players on their roster. They have to have 14 within the next two weeks, so a trade could absolutely happen, or they could still pick up somebody from the waiver wire, and they can still re-sign Rudy Gay and Rodney Magruder if it truly did come down to that. But overall, those are my three trades that I have come up with, and I want to hear what you guys have to say in terms of who would you not want to trade, who would you actually rather receive. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting because I know it's hard to actually say goodbye to anybody. That's why I do like taking up somebody from the waiver wire, but I don't know who can come in and be an immediate force because we were out-rebounded bad against the Phoenix Suns. They had almost 12 rebounds more than the Warriors did. 
and size was an issue. You had really nobody to guard KD, and I understand Draymond Green was not playing. He would be a significant difference maker, but this is what I'm going with. Type in the comments, type one if you like to trade with the Nets, type two if you like to trade with the Knicks, type three if you like to trade with the Pacers. Ultimately, I do like the trade with the Knicks overall. I think Hartenstein would be the best option for the Warriors right now. He's still producing night in, night out for the New York Knicks. So uh, that's going to be my pick. But I want to hear what you guys have to say. And while you're doing that, put in your picks on Prize Picks. It is a sponsor on Warriors today. I use this app constantly. My picks are in for tonight's game. I want to see yours. What do you have to do? You just have to pick between two to six players, projected stats. You just have to click more or less. That's literally all you have to do. These are my picks for tonight. Of course, I had Steph Curry last night. He already hit that more than half a point, which was a prize picks deal. And I have Drew Holiday playing tonight, less than 15 and a half points. All you have to do is go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use promo code CLNS and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Man, I love prize picks. I use this all the time. Probably more than I should, but hey, it's a fun app. What can I say? After last night's game, there were some questions to Steve Kerr surrounding his choices for the closing lineup. Of course, Jonathan Kuminga was in that closing lineup, but he had five personal fouls. So did Steph Curry, but Kuminga's not Curry. While Moses Moody and Andrew Wiggins were on the bench, it raised a lot of questions, including my own, of why would you keep Kuminga in, who wasn't really proving that he should be out there at that point. But Steve Kerr did address this in the press conference. Post-game, he said, I thought both Kaminga and GP were defending at a high level. And obviously, you got to guard Kevin and Book out there. So it felt like those guys were defending well. And so we went with them. That's how it's going to be a lot of nights this year. Whoever's playing the best will finish the game. There's a reason why they pay Steve Kerr the money that they pay him and not me. He knows what he's talking about. Do I like that Kaminga was playing last night in the closing lineup? No. I would have rather seen Moses Moody, who I thought was the game changer on offense and on defense last night. But ultimately, he played Kuminga and not Moses Moody or Andrew Wiggins. And that's fair because Andrew Wiggins didn't have the best night. Ten points, that's fine. One rebound, no assists, and 33% from the field. That's terrible numbers in 27 minutes for Andrew Wiggins. I'm not the only one that thinks so. Steve Kerr also mentioned this. He said he isn't at his best yet. But the first game was exactly three weeks after practice started. This is how it goes sometimes, early in the season. Sometimes guys are in rhythm. Wiggs will be fine. Wasn't his best night. I'll take your word, Steve Kerr. I know Andrew Wiggins can be the player that we all have known and love. So I'm going to give him some time. But in the meantime, list your Warriors closing lineup that you would like to see. Of course, I agree with Steve Kerr. I think it should just be who's playing the best that night. I loved GP2 guarding Devin Booker towards the end of the game, especially on the Suns' last possession. Ultimately, D-Book did end up scoring, but ultimately, I love GP2. I didn't love Kuminga. So type your, guarantee, type your projected closing lineup stats in the comments. I think that overall, you got to have Draymond Green back now. I thought the Warriors could get a few games in before it would be like, oh my gosh, where's Green at? Last night was tough. And I do think you need more size and you need a defensive body out there. So I am sending my best wishes to Draymond Green to hopefully get better soon because the Warriors do have the Sacramento Kings on Friday. They do play at Sacramento. And right now, Sacramento is favored to win this ball game. They will play at 9 p.m. Excuse me, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Central time and 10 p.m. Eastern time. A lot of time zones coming around here. I got that wrong, I think. I did. You know what? You guys just keep 6 p.m. Pacific time, and that's all you need to know. But this is the next game, and all you guys have to do is subscribe to the channel. We will keep you up to date on Warriors today with everything you need to know, Golden State Warriors. All you got to do is hit that sub button for me.